Hi everyone, welcome to the Cobwebs channel. This is the channel where we are dusting off classic cinema to see what it has to offer today. Uh, basically, we talk about old movies on this channel, a lot of times in uh, the way of physical media, and that's what we're doing today. This is a haul video for Kino Lorber's March Madness sale. If you don't know, right now, uh, Kino Lorber is running a March Madness sale all the way through early April of 2021, actually. Uh, so if you're watching this at the time of release, it is still going on, and I picked up some cool movies. I picked up nine titles and three of them I have already seen. Uh, six of them are blind buys. So six of these I have not seen before. Hopefully this ends up still being an engaging video, even though I'm not going to be able to review very many of these, but they will come up in future videos. So eventually I will talk about all the films, but for now, I hope you just enjoy seeing what I picked up because I enjoy seeing that from other YouTubers. So yeah, let's see how this goes. Um, arbitrarily, I split this up by genre. So we're going to start off with the noirs. We're going to move on to a Western. Then we've got a bunch of comedies and then we're going to finish off with an action movie. So uh, I figure a lot of people are interested in noir these days. So that is what we're going to start off with in 1947 with I Walk Alone. And of all of the Blu-rays here, this one might be my favorite cover art. And it was pretty much the cover art that sold me in addition to the cast. So this is starring Burt Lancaster and Kirk Douglas. And it's funny, those two guys kind of occupy the same space in my brain, but I feel like Burt Lancaster's the version who seems like a good person. And Kirk Douglas... He does not seem like a good person, does he? Uh, this also has Lizbeth Scott as the femme fatale. That is a great, iconic looking femme fatale image right there on the poster. Uh, so this is one that I have not seen, but essentially uh, what I've heard it is about is it is about a couple of bootleggers who are Lancaster and Douglas, and uh, they end up getting busted, but... Burt Lancaster gets arrested and Kirk Douglas gets away and he starts a very successful business. Burt Lancaster is eventually released from prison, comes to Kirk Douglas. He wants his share of the money and Kirk Douglas does not want to give it. So uh, it's probably going to be an, end up being a pretty intense movie. And I believe Kirk Douglas uses his ex-girlfriend, Elizabeth Scott, to sort of seduce Burt Lancaster out of the picture. Sounds like a really fun noir with some gorgeous cover art. Uh, this one has got a commentary by Troy Hullworth. And I love Keenan Lorber commentaries because they tend to always have... Uh, film historian commentaries, and I really enjoy that a lot. I love a commentary from a film historian, maybe even more than a director's commentary. I might be weird about that, but I, I do tend to love Kino commentaries. So moving on to the next noir film is actually another Lizbeth Scott film. So I might end up just doing a Lizbeth Scott double feature uh, sometime very soon. This is Pitfall starring Dick Powell. I've recently become a really big fan of Dick Powell. Uh, he is uh, in the noir film Murder My Sweet, which Warner Archive picked up, which I, I recently got on my shelf and watched, and it's quite good. That's actually a Philip Marlowe movie. That's the character that Humphrey Bogart plays in The Big Sleep and that um, Elliot Gould plays in The Long Goodbye. So Dick Powell is in the... Uh, he is one of the actors to play Philip Marlowe, and he's in this one. I've heard fantastic things about this film. You know, a lot of times how I decide to watch movies is checking my letterbox and seeing what the people I follow on letterbox think of it. And this one has high ratings from a lot of people I know and respect. So super excited to check this movie out. Uh, the, the plot synopsis is pretty vague. It's essentially about an ex that, well, a veteran, an ex army man uh, played by Dick Powell, who has a good family life, good business and everything, but he's restless for excitement. And he starts an illicit affair with Lizbeth Scott and uh, boy, she must have been quite the femme fatale back in the day. And I guess things get go bad and things get intense. I don't quite know what the crime angle of this is. If there's murder, there usually is in noir. So I'm expecting that. But heard such great things about Pitfall. But the other thing that makes me very excited to own this disc is got a commentary from Eddie Muller. And Eddie Muller also has a, a commentary on I Wake Up Screaming, which is another noir that Kino Lorber put out, a, a noir that I like a whole lot. It's really, really good. Um, so that's a great commentary. So I'm expecting the same here. He is a film historian, by the way. So yeah, that's Pitfall. Going to have quite the noir day pretty soon. One more noir here. It is... The Hitchhiker, which is very famous movie because it's the one classic film noir directed by a woman. It was directed by Ida Lupino, who was an actress for a long time and then turned to become a director. You might know her from the John Huston Humphrey Bogart movie, High Sierra. She acted in that film. But uh, yeah, she directed this film. And there, Kino Lorber also has an Ida Lupino director's box set. 
And that's probably really great. But the thing is, this is the one I was most excited to see. And it was on sale for so cheap. And it was probably so cheap because everybody wants the box set and nobody's buying this anymore. But the box set would have been quite a bit more money. So I'm starting out with this one. I might move on to the box set and then flip this on eBay or something like that. But uh, apparently this is a very intense, violent, brutal noir. And that's why it's kind of an independent movie, which is why Ida Lupino was able to direct it. Um, you know, in, independent film for the 1950s, and this is 1953, that's pretty interesting. Uh, it kind of reminds me of Kiss Me Deadly, which we talked about on our last video on Criterion pickups. Uh, so yeah, I've heard this is brutal and super intense. Really looking forward to it. All right, so that does it for the noirs. Let's move on to the westerns, or rather just one western. Support your local sheriff from 1969. I have seen this movie. It is extremely fun. Essentially, it is about a real smart aleck drifter played by uh, James Gardner in the Old West who rolls into a town and he's always talking about how he's on his way to Australia. So that's his eventual goal. He's going to go to Australia because he thinks he can get rich and be successful there. But this town really needs a sheriff and he ends up taking the gig because he needs some money. And even though he's like, a total smart aleck and just, is just always joking around. He's actually an incredible gunfighter and he's like the fastest gun in the West basically. So he can really back up his uh, tough talk and it's so funny. It's such a fun movie. Um, it's sometimes I'm, I'm weird. Sometimes it's harder for me in these sales to pick up movies I've already seen because I'm so excited to get movies I haven't seen because I'm so excited to watch new films. Um, but this is one that I watched on streaming. I believe I saw it on TCM actually. And I've heard, well, and, and I thought it was just so great. So I really wanted it on my shelf. And this is not the last time we're going to see James Gardner in this hall. So we're going to be coming up on that. Let's move on to the comedies. I've been really into classic comedies lately, especially romantic comedies, and ended up picking up quite a few of those. So next up is an Ernst Lubitsch film, and I have recently become such a fan of Ernst Lubitsch. <laughs> if you don't know, he directed a lot of comedies, particularly romantic comedies back in the 1930s and 40s particularly. Uh, maybe one of his most famous ones these days is The Shop Around the Corner, which uh, Warner Archive recently put out. But I've been watching a lot of his movies recently. I actually wrote about one of his movies, Trouble in Paradise, which is on cobwebspodcast.com. So you can check that out if you want to. This is Bluebeard's Eighth Wife, and this one I actually already watched. I pretty much watched this one right away, and it's starring Gary Cooper and Claudette Colbert. Claudette Colbert, you probably know from It Happened One Night, but this is actually kind of a different role for Gary Cooper. You know, you probably know he's he's in all those westerns, right? And uh, But he did make some comedies, and this is like a very super energetic, abrasive performance from him in a really fun way. Essentially, he is a rich man who did not get hit by the depression. All the romantic comedies around this time, they're all about the depression and, and rich versus poor. But he's a really rich guy, and he became rich basically by following his instincts. And he's very, very impulsive. And uh, he falls in love with Claudette Colbert, uh, basically proposes to her right away because he decides things in the moment. And she does end up falling for him and accepting after a little bit of back and forth. But she finds out that he's been married seven times before and the drama really kicks up at that point it's a fun little movie i didn't like it as much as a lot of other ernst lubitsch films like trouble in paradise or the shop around the corner uh but it's still totally solid i really enjoyed it a lot of really fast snappy dialogue um very very fun movie so i would definitely recommend bluebeard's eighth wife no no question about it oh also it does have an audio commentary by film historian kat ellinger we well, probably know she's on especially like a lot of horror and exploitation commentaries, uh, Blu-ray releases. So um, I haven't listened to that yet, but gosh, I'm very, very excited about it for sure. Next up is Road to Rio from 1947. I just did a podcast with Brian Sauer from the Just the Discs YouTube channel and the Just the Discs podcast and Pure Cinema podcast. And we talked about Bob Hope horror comedies, uh, The Ghost Breakers and The Cat and the Canary, which Kino Lorber did release recently and I do have on the shelf. And we talked a little bit about these road movies. Uh, the road movies I kind of grew up with, although I don't know that I ever saw this one. And I, I re recently started rewatching them. There's seven of these movies all together. They are comedies about Bob Hope and Bing Crosby. They are on the road. Um, never really, <laughs> usually doesn't talk about why they're on the road, but they're traveling for girls, essentially. That's all they ever talk about is wanting to get laid. They're a little bit sleazy movies for the 40s and 50s, but I, I kind of enjoy them. They're very silly. They all have Dorothy L'Amour as the love interest who Bob Hope always wants. She, he always wants her to fall in love with him, but Bob Hope is the goof and Bing Crosby is the suave guy. So she always goes for Bing Crosby. Uh, Brian Sauer said this was his favorite of the road movies. 
It is not available to stream anywhere for any price. That is a good way to get me to buy a Blu-ray is if I can't stream it. Because I, I don't just watch movies on, on uh, Blu-ray. Um, I do do quite a bit of streaming. But if I can't stream it, uh, that really kicks up my incentive to blind buy it. So I'm excited to watch Road to Real. No special features on this one, however. I feel I should call that out. They're just, they're funny movies in like a really goofy way. And they usually have really good music sung by Bing Crosby. So uh, I, I like those movies, but I understand they can be acquired an acquired taste. They are maybe more dated than, than some other comedies at that time, than certainly like the romantic comedies. So next up, 1964, we're jumping all the way to the 60s with What a Way to Go. I have not seen this yet, but I have heard so many good things about it. I'm so excited. It has got an insane cast. Look at this cast. Shirley MacLaine, Paul Newman, Robert Mitchum, Dean Martin, Gene Kelly, Bob Cummings, and Dick Van Dyke. It's insane. Essentially what this movie is about is Shirley MacLaine just wants to fall in love and she wants somebody to grow old with, but she keeps marrying guys and these guys, they decide they want to strike it rich and they set out uh, all gung-ho to strike it rich and they end up dying under um, some kind of accident or something like that. So it's about her going through these string of husbands and they all die. And it's not a murder movie. She's not killing them or anything like that. It's it's a comedy, essentially. Um, at least I don't think she's murdered them. That's not what I hear. I've not seen the movie. But uh, I've heard it's like a beautiful and incredibly fun, goofy 1960s comedy. I've recently been getting more into 1960s movies because I've said before, I think the 60s is maybe the most underrated decade of film because I feel like it has the least obvious identity it's the transitional decade between the Hayes Code era and the gritty realism of the 1970s. Uh, so we're basically just inching away from the Hayes Code and getting a little darker. Uh, but there's also just a lot of fun movies in there, especially comedies and sex comedies and things like that. So very excited for that Sean McClain movie. This is a movie that I have the least faith in. I don't know if this is going to be good because it caught my eye and I was looking up, up on Letterboxd and people weren't rating it very highly. But it has such a great cast, and it sounds like so much fun. It's another 1960s comedy from 1965, The Art of Love. Look at this cast. All right, we got James Gardner back again. We've got Dick Van Dyke, and we've got Angie Dickinson, who you probably know from Rio Bravo with John Wayne. That is just a bulletproof cast, and the plot sounds really, really fun. It is a movie where Dick Van Dyke is a painter, and he's having a lot of trouble getting success. And his friend James Gardner suggests, well... Artists are really only successful when they're dead. So they hatch a plot to fake his death. And now the paintings are getting more successful. But James Gardner is uh, getting rich off selling these paintings. And I don't think he's really sharing the profits with Dick Van Dyke. And Angie Dickinson, who's Dick Van Dyke's uh, girlfriend, she, you know, thinks he's dead now. And James Gardner starts romancing her. So Dick Van Dyke hatches a revenge plot against James Gardner to frame him for his own murder. That's what the plot synopsis says, at least. And I just thought that sounded so fun. So I'll definitely report back on this one. I don't know that it's going to be any good. It may not, uh, but it does have an audio commentary by a film historian and critic, um, Peter Tunget. I want to say that is how you say his name. I'm not positive on that. Um, look at that poster. It, it looks really, really fun. And I, I like Dick Van Dyke. And I, I mean, I like all those people. Come on. So that's it for the comedies. Uh, we're almost through the entire stack. We're going to go on to the action movie, which is another one that I have seen before. Revenge of the Ninja, baby. It is a canon movie. Uh, I have the other two movies and canon's Ninja trilogy on Blu-ray. Um, you know what? Let me grab those. The screen factories are right over here. Uh, so we got... Ninja 3 The Domination, uh, which was the third film in Canon's Ninja Trilogy, and my, my, my Kinos are over on this other shelf. And Enter the Ninja, which was the first film in the trilogy. The Kino Lorber also released this one. Uh, so now I've completed the trilogy, Revenge of the Ninja. I did previously own this on a terrible cropped DVD, so I'm very happy to finally upgrade this on Blu-ray. Uh, this is, so all of these movies, these this Ninja Trilogy, they all have this guy, Sho Kasugi, who's a fantastic martial artist, and he always plays a great ninja in all of them. But this is the only one where he is the true protagonist. He's he's a bad guy in Enter the Ninja. He is um, sort of a, he's a side character in Ninja 3, essentially. Not the main character, but he is in this one. It's been a long time since I've seen it, so I can't speak to too many specifics. But uh, I do really, really like it a lot. It's tons of fun. And that is what I do remember. It's directed by Sam Fistenberg, who directed a lot of great canon movies like um, American Ninja, which I love, and Avenging Force with Michael Dudikoff. And this one has a commentary by him and an introduction by him. 
I'm just such a fan of that dude. I love canon movies. We're definitely gonna have to do a, a canon episode of this uh, channel where I just you know go through maybe my canon collection and talk about those movies. But very happy to finally have Revenge of the Ninja on Blu-ray. So that is it. We have got nine Kino Lorber movies. Look at those uniform spines. I actually really enjoy that. I'm going to have fun filing this away on the Kino shelf. Uh, but yeah, thank you everyone so much for watching. Uh, if you like this, please give us a like. Please give us a subscribe. More videos are going to be coming on the way. Um, and thanks very much. Check out cobwebspodcast.com to see what we're doing. Have a good one.